Welcome to our 2022 One Future Student Leadership Conference. Um, this year's theme, if you are a renewal, you know that every year we like to uh, select a theme. And this year's theme is focus on your path. And the reason we came, our team came up with that as we brainstormed was the last few years, COVID, um, every, you know, the different challenges that we were each individually, you know, given and that we are here now in the same space and hopefully have, you know, overcome some of them. We know that our goals or our own vision can get blurred. And so when we said, what does it really take for a student who's either a first year or a senior, um, you know, what is it that they really need that first year, second year, third year or fourth year? And it really is for you to focus on your own path. It really is for you to like, you know, stay true to what you want to do, what you want to accomplish and what it's going to take to do that. And so that that is how we came up with a theme. And let me go with thank you. Thank you to our sponsors and our supporters. We are a nonprofit. We are very collaborative. We have a lot of community partners who support our efforts. And by supporting our efforts, I mean they're supporting you. Each and every one of you who is here is being touched by Agua Caliente, by Desert Hot Springs, Wells Fargo, Anderson Children's Foundation, Altura, and Union Bank. Um, you know, it we would not be able to do this work without them. And so I really want to say thank you to them, along with the partners, the matching partners, because many of you have different matching partners um, who are supporting you in your journey. And while they support you financially, they are also supporting you with holistic student support services that we're providing this month and throughout the entire year. But those of you who are returning in our team also know that once you're in the One Future family, you're always in it, regardless of if you're a scholarship or you're not, or if you graduate and you move on to your professional career. So as I was talking about our theme, we do have nine sessions and there are some mandatory ones that we're encouraging you um, to attend and the orientation and the closing are the mandatory ones. And then we have some electives. They are one hour. So essentially we're asking you to gift five hours this month and more if you'd like. Um, and the reason we do that is because we know that these are sessions that have and continue to support students like yourself. Many scholars or many of the alumni or speakers that you will experience have gone through this program are now professionals and are coming back to give their time. So check these out and sign up for the minimum or the maximum. Um, we love to see repeats. We also want to encourage you to, you know, engage as you as you attend these sessions. We we don't believe in one-way engagement. We love the two-way discussions. We're on social media. So if you see something that you think this is fabulous, I want to share it with everyone. Please, please tag us on it. So you'll see a lot of announcements from our program, from you know, different programs that One Future manages. So definitely join our social media and please, please uh, share your thoughts, okay? And so um, at this point, I know there's several team members. I've seen them pop up. You know, there's a, a mighty group of 12 of us. And so we all do different, very different work, but we all do the work with one thing in mind, and that's you. That's your success. That's that you are gonna complete what you want to and that you're gonna hopefully come back to the Coachella Valley and give back to the community and make it better than, you know, than it was when you were going through your journey. So some of our team members are here now. So I don't know if Sheila, you want to say a word on behalf, behalf of our team before we continue on. Sure. Thank you, Christina. And great to see everybody here today. And congratulations on your scholarship. Um, so I, I got to meet a few of you, I think, at the scholarship ceremony. Um, we're so excited to have you on board this year. And we really mean that. I love reading where, where you're all going to school to see all those different universities and to know that you're all coming from the Coachella Valley and hopefully um, have an interest in, in coming back and helping make the Coachella Valley a better place and giving your gift to the future of our region. That's what we'd love to see. If your plan is to graduate and do something outside of the area first, then we hope also that you'll, you'll still come back and support or even maybe come back later on in your career and be part of uh, the future of the Coachella Valley. That's why we do what we do. Um, and I want to just say uh, our team reads all of the scholarship applications. So I see very familiar names on here. Uh, and I've, we've read your scholarship applications. We've read your stories. 
and I am completely inspired by by you. So I just want you to know that that um, while while we can't read absolutely every one of them individually across the twelve of us, we have read them all. Um, and so I probably read twenty or so. Um, and I just want you to know that we're proud of what you're doing and grateful for your choosing your path and the focus, the, the theme, the focus on the path is excellent because it's clear that you are people who have thought through who you want to be in the world and what gifts you want to give. And so I thank you and I congratulate you and we're excited to start this journey with you. Thank you, Sheila. And you will, as students, you will have the privilege of seeing our team, Sheila, and as I mentioned, um, you know, Candace, Ernie, all of them throughout the series. And so I encourage you all to, you know, send a message. And if you're ever curious about how we do the work that we do, I mean, our team is probably the most, we love to talk about our work and we love to mentor and we love to share networks. So I just want to say that, um, that you're privileged to have that opportunity available to you. I didn't introduce Fatima or myself, you know, but I'd like to kind of take a moment at this point to introduce ourselves and just so you get kind of a snapshot of who you will be working with. You're going to be working with all of us, but I will have the privilege of meeting with each and every one of you throughout the, the term. And so just so you know a little bit about my journey, I am also a Coachella Valley graduate. I graduated from Indio High School. So if there's any Rajas out there, go Rajas. Um, I then went on to the University of San Diego, then got my master's um, in English and did some work, you know, a nonprofit management certificate. So as you can tell, I love learning and I love helping people in their journey, you know, knowledge or growth. And so that's me. I'm the first one in my family to graduate. Very proud of that. You'll see um, my college uh, and life mentor there who had the privilege of speaking to our students a few years back. You'll also see my family. They're my why. They're the reason I do a lot of the work that I do. You'll see my parents. They're my root. They're the people who really rooted a lot of my values and my work ethic um, and who were very proud on this day. You can tell my dad hardly ever smiled, but he was slightly smiling there. I got my degree. And then this is me. I'm the director of college and career services, and I'm really passionate about my work. And I, I do get excited about basically doing what I'm doing right now and is talking to you about your full potential. So I am going to hand it off to my colleague, Fatima Salcedo. Thank you, Christina. And again, welcome everyone. As Christina mentioned, uh, we wanted to share a little bit about ourselves because in the next, in the next year, the next academic year, you'll be receiving a lot of uh, emails and you know you'll have we'll have the opportunity to uh, to get to chit chat with you to get to know you uh, so we just wanted to kind of uh show you who we are and uh we understand that there's a lot of things that you know you and i and christina and everyone here uh, might have in common right and for one uh i am a product of this valley as many of you i graduated from Cathedral city high school uh, go lions so if i see any of you uh ccs um alumni uh as we meet with you um, know that I also went there uh, myself. Uh, I then transferred out to College of the Desert, uh, where I got my associate's degree on communication studies. So as you can see uh, here in my family, as Christina mentioned, a big part of my journey and getting me to, to here to where I am today. Uh, throughout my journey, I had the opportunity to get to know amazing individuals, uh, to get to work with students and peers of mine that really uh, inspire me to do the work that I'm doing today, right? Uh, and you can see Christina uh, and Oscar Fonseca and now at Cal State San Bernardino, uh, they've been my mentors from, from step one, right? From the moment that I uh, joined uh, One Future Coachella Valley as a scholarship recipient myself back in 2013 uh, and continue to kind of, you know, help me to continue on my journey and, and push me along uh, and help me any anytime that I got stuck. So um, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, I transferred from College of the Desert to Cal State Fullerton uh, back in 2015 and then obtained my bachelor's degree on communication studies in 2017. Um, again, continue to get involved uh, with uh, student-led organizations. I love the work that uh, I was doing and just being in the college uh, atmosphere with all my peers. So uh, that took me to my next step, One Future Coachella Valley. I always knew that I wanted to come back and do some of the work and, and have some of the impact that my mentors had on me. So I'm very blessed to be back as part of the One Future staff and to be working with you all. Um, so excited to be working with you for the next um, for the next year, as I said. And yeah, we'll be in touch throughout the next to the next few months. 
So we're not going to go too into detail on everything, but we just want to review some of the requirements uh, for your scholarship and, uh, you know, as part of our program, what you are going to be expected to, to do. Uh, I do want to mention, though, uh, you do, everyone should have, or almost everyone should have received your student award agreement. That is uh, the first document that you receive from our team, um, and that is where you accept uh, the award, right? So if you don't know what that's like, what, what I'm talking about, uh, reach out to us. I know I do have a couple uh, messages in there, some, some of you that haven't gotten your student award agreement, so we'll work with you individually on those. Uh, but I want to refer that one because this is the one where you're going to be able to see everything that we're talking about in the next few slides. So if you ever have any questions of like, what was that one document? We're going to make this deck available to you, the slides, so you can always review them, but also know that your student award agreement is where everything is also listed. Um, so program requirements. Uh, it's going to be, as we like to see, for us, it's like very, as Spider-Man says, easy peasy. <laughs> um, but I know for some of you, I just wanted to review again you're you're going to be required to submit a set of documents um there's going to be a set of documents that you're going to have to uh submit to start you at the program to onboard you so that's one checklist we're going to go over that one that's one set of documents you'll have another set way smaller than the first one uh, for the winter slash spring term so every time that you term a semester that you finish a semester or a quarter you're going to have to submit some of those documents so just know that this is not all you have to do there'll be other documents that you'll have to submit throughout the academic year uh, again you can refer back to the student award agreement to check those um, the other one is that you will be required to attend a one-on-one -on -one meeting with our team that means that you get to meet uh, personally just yourself to go over really anything that you want to cover, whether that's financial aid, financial need. Um, you know, if you, there's a gap that you have in your scholarship and you're looking for ideas, we can help you brainstorm on some creative ways or some other opportunities that you might um, you might not know about. Um, so again, that's going to be all about you. I uh, want to talk about academics. I'm going to talk about tutoring or even just about your summer plans. Uh, this is what the one-on-one -on -one meeting is going to be for. Um, you're going to get to hear, you're going to get an email uh, probably mid-August with the link to register for the one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, only because we want to make sure that you don't worry about that one just yet. Worry about your documents first. We want to clear you on that part, and then we can go ahead and schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings. Those are going to be virtual. So it's going to be a quick 30 minute Zoom meeting with our team and you'll be done with that one. So you'll be doing that uh, one per term, one in the fall and one in the spring. Um, again, the third one here is full time college enrollment, whatever your institution determines is full time. So some of you might be in different programs. Some of you might be on a traditional 12 unit uh, is considered full time. 15 units is considered full time. Uh, some of you are in like nursing programs, for example, and for you, nine units is full time. Right, so it's going to be according to your program and to your institution. Um, and if there's any questions regarding that, we can work with you one on one to, to address those. Um, we also are going to be looking at your GPA. As I said, every term, every time that you finish a academic term, you will be submitting your grades. Uh, we want to make sure that you are, uh, you know, you're you're in a good place where you want to be academically, so that you know you keep your financial aid, so that you keep moving forward and your um, you know, you're, you're following your college and career plan. So for renewal scholars, for those students that have been with us in the program before, you're already either a sophomore or above. So for you, uh, 2.5 or above would be the minimum. Um, and then for new scholars, those of you that are neither new to the program or are freshmen, uh, incoming freshmen, 2.0 or above would be your uh, GPA requirement. And we'll be checking those, like I said, when you submit grades, um and yeah well we can talk about what if you do go if you i do want to mention actually now if you do end up falling under this gpa that doesn't mean that you're not longer eligible to the scholarship that means that you have to go through an additional process with us you have to fill out a form academic probation so we can review that doesn't mean you lose your scholarship all the time right that means that we're going to review and we're going to assess if we can continue moving forward I know sometimes students in the past, when we, when we tell them you've been put in academic probation or they haven't even submitted their grades, but they know they fell below the required GPA, they'll just go MIA, 
they don't turn anything in, they don't want to submit your, and we're reaching out and we're asking you for grace because we wanna make sure that we can release your money. So if that's ever the case for you, reach out to us, we'll go for one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure that we can address that and we can help you move forward. So as I said, uh, your deliverables do, these are the ones that you're gonna be due for your onboarding for the fall. And I know it says fall, but really it's like now, until the fall begins, right, your, your term. So uh, like I said, it is a little long. Uh, we do have close to nine, I think it's like nine documents in here. Uh, we're gonna be sending you a follow-up email after this session sometime this week um, with the checklist, with the slides, with everything that we covered here so that don't feel like if you miss it right now, uh, but if that's it, we're gonna be sending it to you, but just wanted you to keep an eye out so you know what you're gonna be expecting. That list is all of the documents that you are gonna be submitting, st starting with your student award agreement. So if you already did the one that you have to initial, that you accept your scholarship and you, you sign, you're already done with one, right? So again, it is. it seems like a long list, but it's not, uh, it's very easy documents that you should be able to uh, download and upload to Dropbox. Uh, pretty easy. And the link to submit is going to be to Dropbox. It's listed on the checklist. And again, we're going to be sending that to you uh, on that follow-up email so you have it handy. And I'm going to go through each one of those documents. So I can, I'm going to go ahead and move us forward. As I said, this is a student award agreement. If it looks familiar, it's because you probably already turned it in. If it doesn't, I'll recommend uh, looking through your email to see if you, if you received it. It should have come from uh, the scholarships at onefuture.org email, so or from Luis Rojas and our team, uh, who is managing that part of the application process. So again, very important, make sure that you accept the scholarship. This is from last year, so yours is going to reflect the current academic uh, year. But again, all you have to do is accept, initial, very, very, very important that you list the university or the college or the institution that you're going to be attending in the fall. This is where we're going to be sending your check. So this is what we look for, your student ID number and your institution. We need that. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to send your check. Or if we do, we might send it to the wrong location. So make sure that you update that if it has changed uh, with us. And again, the third page on your SAA, your Student Aware Agreement Packet, is the scholarship requirement timeline. This is just a timeline letting you know what's happening when, what to expect. All you have to do is sign and date for that one. So again, if you haven't received that one, uh, feel free to reach out to us, uh, or you can also reach out to Luis. Luis, if you can pop your email on the chat, uh, that way they know who the contact is for uh, any scholarship uh, questions. All right, another document on your student, uh, on your checklist for the fall is your high school transcripts. For your renewals, if you have those handy, send them to us. If you don't, we're gonna go back and look for those from last year. Um, so we might have that, but if you have it, I will say just submit it again. That way it's on that current, in the current year for us and RN and it can make things faster. Uh, for those of you that are new to our program, we definitely need you to send your high school transcripts. Now, this need to be complete transcripts. That means that your senior grades are already listed on it. It doesn't have to be an official transcript. It can be an official, you can, log on into your, um, to your school email, into your school account if you still have access to and download that, or you can also request a copy of them. Uh, sometimes we hear students that they just go to the high school that they attended and their registrar's office can give them a copy of an unofficial transcript. Again, it doesn't have to be official as long as it is complete. So that means that the grades from your 12th grade, your spring term, they need to be listed. Because a lot of the times we get them, but they're only up to the fall because it's an older version that you didn't have complete. So just make sure that you double check for those. Uh, the next one is your fall class schedule for the 2022 academic year. Uh, again, we're looking for full-time enrollment. So we're looking for how many units you're enrolled in. Uh, yes, we wanna know what classes you're taking and what days, but really what we wanna know is how many units. So as long as it tells you how many units, the total or it breaks them down, a lot of the times students uh, get this information from their unofficial transcripts from your current school because it lists where you have in progress. Um, again, it just has to be a, a screenshot. You don't have to download everything. If you want to take a picture with your cell phone, that's okay as long as it's, you know, we're able to read in and everything. Um, just the one thing we're looking for, make sure that it includes the units on it. 
Uh, next up, we have your financial aid award letter uh, or your FAA as we call it. Uh, this is the letter that you get from your university, your college, whatever institution you're attending, letting you know what you have been offered on financial aid. This includes any grants, any loans, any scholarships, work study, any of that stuff. Uh, this is this is an example from, I think, like the call states for the most part go with this one. Um, but yours might look different. Each school kind of uses their own template. So just make sure that you look, it should be under your student portal, go to your financials, uh, your financial information, and then go to look for your award letter, award status, uh, financial aid. That's what we're looking for. And really, we want to see what you've been offered and what you've accepted. Uh, mostly what you've accepted because, you know, you could have been offered five different loans, but you might have not accepted five different loans. You probably declined all of them. And in our end, we see that you have five loans. So that helps us, uh, you know, kind of send opportunities your way. If we know that you have a gap, you're taking too many loans, maybe we can send you a scholarship opportunity so that you can replace those instead. Um, so again, financial aid award letter. Uh, I do want to mention we'll be sending um, specifically for this next document uh, a step-by-step -step instructions on how you can get those uh, from the websites. All right. This is the student aid report. Uh, this is what you get when you complete, uh, for those of you that complete the FAFSA or for those of you uh, that might complete the CARA, this is the one that you would be getting where it tells you uh, you know, what you're expected to, what your family is expected to contribute. It provides you kind of, it's kind of like a report, a summary of your FAFSA. It is about five to eight pages long. We do need all of it. So when you do download it, make sure that you download the full PDF. Uh, this is more or less how the FAFSA one looks like and then the Dream Act on the other side. Again, for this ones, we will be sending you on that follow-up email that I mentioned early, earlier we will be sending you step-by-step -step instructions on where to click within the website so that it's easier for you uh, to get this ones. And this is for the upcoming academic year, 22-23. So for this one, I'll go a little bit deeper in this one. This one, like I said, this one is a grant from California. So the, the, the call grant, right? What we're looking for you, we'll send you the step-by-step -step instruction. Some of you that are first uh, year students, freshmen, this might be completely new to you because you might have never even done a profile uh, within the California Student Aid um, website. So on that step-by-step -step instructions that we're going to be sending you, you'll see kind of like an option to create your account. If you are attending an institution in California, you want to make sure that you have this account because that's where you check if any financial aid has been offered to you from the state. Right. So once you go on the website, you'll have the option to select the academic year that you're looking for. In this case, it would be 22-23. All we're looking for is you can do view card. That's not what we're looking for. That's a report. That's not what we need. We need you to click show details right below it. And it's going to pop out a little window like the one on the right. This is a war status. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the information that's listed in here. This one is blank. Uh, for the purpose of just using it as an example, but the one that you see on your end will most likely be populated. So with your information, if it's not, it still take a screenshot and send to us because we'll clear you with that because you did it. It's not on your end. It's, you know, it's something might be processing or something like that. Um, so again, for those of you that are attending a California institution, um, you would go for this one. So they're both two different ones, SAR and SAAS. Uh, and again, we'll send you instructions for those as well. Couple more documents. Uh, thank you letter. Uh, this one is the one that you'll be, um, we encourage, we like to encourage our students to always write a thank you letter to any scholarship organizations that you apply to, whether you get accepted, whether you get the scholarship or you don't. Um, sometimes that's the difference between, you know, someone reconsidering your, you know, your offer or your status and saying, you know what, we didn't, give the scholarship to the student, but more funding became available. You're the first person that's gonna to come to mind if we have a thank you letter for us, for other, for other folks. So we wanna encourage you and get you in the habit of always, always writing a thank you letter. Um, and even more if you got it. Uh, we love to share this with your funders. Uh, everyone here 
you know, some of you may have different funders than others. We like to share, you know, look at what, um, and I'm not just forgetting, look at what Kelly's doing and, you know, how, how this is going to impact her. And it's, it's a really good gesture and we love to read them. So uh, we just ask that you address it to your funder. You can find who's funding your scholarship on your student award agreement. That's where it's going to tell you uh, who's funding it. Uh, at least make it a paragraph long. It doesn't have to be a whole page, but I know sometimes we get like very brief. Thank you. This is really going to help me. Have a great day. You know, like, no, let's do at least a paragraph. Um, and then edit, edit, and edit. And uh, sometimes we get things that we might not want to share with the funders because, you know, we want to make sure that you take the time to, to write it and make sure that you sign it so that they know who you are. Uh, for those of you, I know we have only a few, but if you're in a two year scholarship, um, you won't need to rewrite that unless you want to update your funder, you totally can, um, but they already have the one from last year. So if you want to update them and let them know, look, this is what I've been up to. Thank you again for a second year of funding. That's probably going to go a long way. So we encourage it, but it's not mandatory for two years. Yes. Another one that you'll be getting in your emails, and we don't have it in here, we don't have the slide. Uh, it's what we're calling the college and career plan. That's going to be a template that we're going to be sending to you uh, to help you set goals for yourself. And it's going to be, you know, about your academics, about your grades, uh, about your financials, about your mental wellness. What are some goals that you plan to set for yourself for the next academic year? Uh, so you'll be getting that one in an email uh, when we send you this follow up, but you'll also have to turn that one in. Uh, along with all of your documents, uh, because when we meet with you during your one on one, we want to we want to check in with you and, and review that college and career plan and say, you know, what is it that you set your mind to do and what is it that you're doing. So uh, look out for that one. Again, it's going to be on the follow up or uh, orientation email that we'll be sending. Uh, and this is where you'll be submitting all of your documents. They're all going to be going to a Dropbox link. All you have to do is drag and, and drop into the, the Dropbox. This is the link right here. Um, we'll, we'll send you that one as well. Again, for all the documents that you're turning in, as long as they're eligible, you can take a screenshot, you can, you know, you can take a picture, whatever works for you, but just make sure that it's, you know, uh, that we can read it more than all. Uh, and that's what you'll be submitting. Again, if you have three out of the nine documents available today, turn those in. Tomorrow you get another one, turn that one in and start checking them off so that you, you have one less to do the next day. If you are a renewal student, uh, you already know this process, use this link, please. Uh, the other year is for a dip for last year, so we won't be checking that one. This is the one that we'll be checking for this academic year. Dropbox, OMCB Dropbox 2223. Next slide, we only have a couple more. I know we're coming up to time. Uh, so how will you get my money? <laughs> how would I get my money? I wanna know how I would get my money. Um, so again, first step, student award agreement, make sure that you list institution and the correct student ID number. That's how they connect it to you. So very important that you turn that in. As we mentioned earlier, your scholarship funding is going to be dispersed to your university or your institution once all of the documents are clear on our end. So once we've received everything, then that's the day that you're going to be included in that clearance. So at least please make sure that like don't submit them on September 2nd in the morning and expect to be included on it because we might not have gotten through those documents just yet. So we encourage you to do at least one week before to be entered into that one. Keep in mind again that those clearance reports are only generated every two weeks. So after, after September 2nd, the next one would be two weeks from there. So, and then every two weeks. Funding is not reserved. Uh, unfortunately, we're not able to hold your funding for the future academic year. So for whatever reason, some of you um, might end up being over awarded. That's a good thing, meaning that everything is covered. You don't longer need the scholarship. Uh, that's awesome. We congratulate you on that, but unfortunately we're not able to hold the funding till next year. So if that is your case, let us know. Um, so we can, you know, we can work with you on that. Uh, we just wanted to give everyone a heads up. And then also uh, the funding is specifically for the fall to the spring. We're not able to disperse during the summer. So if you are planning on taking a summer class, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to either front this that money and then hopefully once you get your scholarship, you can you can use that up. So I just wanted to, to clarify uh, for those of you that are new to the program, the total of your award is going to be divided 
except if you, you know, if you're in a special program and you're graduating by the end of the year, you would know. Uh, but for the rest of you that are, you know, going to go through the whole academic year, we will divide that by the number of terms that you do through the academic year. So for those of you that are in the semester system, you have two terms, fall and spring. Some of you take some winter classes, but officially fall and spring. So let's say you got a $2,000 scholarship. And that's just to throw a number. You're going to get $1,000 for the fall, and then you get the remaining $1,000 for the spring. So we divide your check on the number of terms that you're attending. If you're on a, on a quarter system, then we'll divide it by three. Uh, you'll get a third of it in the fall, a third of it in the winter, and a third of it in the spring. So just wanted to kind of, because sometimes we get questions and that's okay if you have to ask us later, but sometimes we get questions on like, hey, I didn't get, I thought I, I had gotten $2,000 and I only got a thousand. That's because the other thousand, the other half is coming during your spring term. So I just wanted to put that out there so that you know, scholarship is divided up, uh, among the number of terms you're attending. 